Our uh, first speaker this morning is Dr. Michael Lewicki. He's director of the New Mexico Clinical Research and Osteoporosis Center. He's clinical assistant professor of medicine at the University of New Mexico, and he's president of the Oste Osteoporosis Foundation of New Mexico in Albuquerque. He received his medical degree at Northwestern. He was an intern at University of New Mexico, residency at the University of New Mexico. He's a senior editor for clinical investigation. He's on the board of directors for the United States Bone and Joint Initiative. He tells me in his family, uh, he's uh, from Boston, and he's the only one that's left Boston to uh, go outside into the West. And he's going to speak this morning on individualizing osteoporosis therapy. Well, thank you, David. It's uh, great to be here at this meeting I've heard so much about for so many years. Uh, this is my disclosure. And uh, I, I don't need to tell any of you in this audience that taking care of patients uh, involves uh, individualizing uh, treatment decisions uh, in, in the absence of uh, clear evidence in many cases, or at least insufficient evidence, as it applies to that particular patient. So we all do this every day. I think uh, we've developed a comfort level at doing it over the years. If uh, you're interested in uh, thinking more about individualizing care with osteoporosis, I would encourage you to sign up for an ASBMR uh, webinar which is going to be held this uh, coming uh, week on Wednesday, and I think it'll be archived online after that. Uh, but uh, we have a group of gl great clinicians with uh, Neil Binkley, Susan Greenspan, and Paul Miller, and it's called Common Clinical Conundrums. And what we're going to do is present very short cases uh, where a treatment decision has to be made, and, and yet the evidence is uh, insufficient, and the guidelines don't really tell us exactly what to do, and the experts will bounce it back and forth and say how they would approach that particular problem. Well, the good news about osteoporosis is that there is improved uh, awareness uh, with the public and amongst many physicians about osteoporosis. We have excellent diagnostic tools in terms of uh, DEXA. We have um, fracture risk assessment algorithms such as FRAX for assessing fracture risk. We have effective and safe treatments, uh, an inexpensive drug called Alendronate that's practically free, it's so cheap. Uh, we have a better understanding of the pathogenesis of osteoporosis that uh, is leading to uh, the development of new pharmacological agents with uh, novel targets. And we do have some federal initiatives to improve osteoporosis care. But there's bad news uh, as well. Osteoporosis remains underdiagnosed, undertreated, and even when treatment is started, uh, it's common that patients do not take the medication long enough to benefit from reduction of fracture risk. Uh, there's often a poor understanding of the balance between benefits and risks. So uh, patients commonly hear through the news media uh, terrifying things about the drugs that we'd like to prescribe, uh, but don't fully understand that uh, uh, there's benefits that may far uh, outweigh those very rare risks. Uh, there are concerns about the quality of bone density testing, and uh, unfortunately, I, I, I fear that the quality of testing may be getting uh, worse rather than better as time passes and uh, uh, more and more uh, outpatient DEXA facilities are uh, closing. Uh, because of um, draconian cuts in DEXA reimbursement. And finally, we have uh, restrictions on the coverage of bone density testing by many insurance plans. Uh, we can't always use the drug that we believe is the best because of uh, uh, coverage concerns. And there's been attempts to limit uh, uh, ordering of vitamin D and bone turnover markers, even when we, uh, the clinicians believe that these tests might be helpful. So. This is an individual. This happens to be Aunt Edna from our family album. Uh, here you see Aunt Edna on the left. She is a, a, a fine looking straight and standing woman in her 50s. About 20, 25 years later, uh, Aunt Edna uh, has severe postmenopausal osteoporosis with multiple vertebral compression fractures. And she died shortly after that second uh, picture was taken. So, uh, I think the reason we're all here is that we don't want our patients to wind up like 